So the first place I had to start was making a template for myself, and wow, it ended up huge. Four pieces of printer paper, huge. But you know what? That's okay. Around here, we accept crafts of all shapes and sizes. Terrytown sits on a massive rock, and I knew this project would be on the bigger side, so for the base, I really only wanted to use things I had lying around, like this sheet of XPS foam that covered almost the whole circumference. And I did have to glue on an extra piece right here, but that was easy. Keeping up with the theme of using all the trash in my office, I had this miscellaneous foam that I hot glued onto the bottom to give the rock some height. Now, beautiful scenic cliff sides don't usually look like this, so with the rest of the XPS foam I had left, I began attaching a bunch of randomly cut stone-like shapes to the side. With all of the sides covered, I'm going to mix up a hearty serving of goop that I can use to fill in all the empty space between each rock and also add some texture while I'm at it. This goop is just a mixture of baking soda and Mod Podge and it's wonderfully cheap and makes the foam look a lot less like foam when you paint it. Once the goop was all hardened, I needed to add a protective layer over everything, and wow, the space is still really huge and I'm having a hard time getting over that. For the protective layer, which will also act as some good shading as we paint, I combined some black paint and Mod Podge and gave it a nice, even coat. Before I started painting, I had to boot up Breath of the Wild just to check that I was mixing up the right colors for the rock. For those of you who might not know about this town or the quest to build this town, this is a quest called From the Ground Up, where you help a company called Bolson Construction and build a town by finding resources to build the houses and people to populate it. It's by far my favorite quest from the entire game, and one fun little tidbit about Bolson Construction is that they only hire people whose names end in the suffix sun. And you know, I'm just not sure if there are any extremely talented, funny, creative crafters out there who have a well-established and deserved fan base who inspired me to make this channel in the first place whose name ends in sun. <coughs> so, uh, seems a name ending in na will have to do. Uh, what is that music? Uh, not sure how to end that joke, just know that it compensated for the fact that my name does not end in sun. Anyway, uh, for almost all the other structures in Terrytown, I'm gonna be using coffee stirring sticks, of which I bought a very large box of them. And it's, uh, it's kind of hard to look away, they kind of just mesmerize you. On top of making the big template you saw at the beginning, I also made these templates for all the decks that the houses sit on. To make them, I'm first lining up a bunch of those stir sticks and using a pencil to trace the shape of the deck on top. When I finish tracing the pattern, I'm gonna connect all of the stir sticks by gluing on more stir sticks perpendicular to the deck. This will keep all of them together when I snip off the excess. Eventually, the deck is cut out into the proper shape and I start adding the rim around the bottom. Before I add it around the entire deck, however, I'm gonna glue on the stairs first, so it's easy to snip off the excess as I add each one. Once all of them are attached, I add the front piece of the rim and voila! Something about tiny little stairs just makes my heart so happy. I hope there's a little microorganism out there who appreciates them like I do. Anyway, that was basically the test run so I could have a tried and true way to build the other five decks. So take everything I just did and multiply it by five. By my calculations, that means a lot of glue and a few splinters, but by the end of it, I have all of the tops done and I add the stairs and rim just like I did for the first one. Not too long after, I have the decks mostly built. Do you remember this second template I made? Yeah, I bet you thought that was the last of it. You fool, you look like an absolute buffoon. I made a third template specifically for the checkerboard-esque pattern you see on the decks. I brainstormed a lot of ways to accomplish this, but the best method I found was cutting out the pattern on some sketchbook paper and gluing it on top. Before we cut anything, we have to season our cutting mat. <laughs> Just kidding, that's, that's paper, and um, it's kind of weirdly accurate because I'm white, so. But anyway, uh, this is the first one I cut out. I'll be using some clear tacky glue to secure it on top of the deck, and for this first one, I also scored the actual design lines into the paper. I won't do this for the rest, but just know I was crazy enough at one point to think that I could. 
And if while you're watching this you think, wow, this part looks painfully slow and why is she using a box cutter? <laughs> Just know I'm thinking the exact same thing. And on top of using the most optimal cutting apparatus, here's a really impressive shot of me flicking away the paper. Nailed it. Anyway, we have a lot left to cover, so I'm gonna go grab a drink, but pay attention and do not miss this next part. It's really important. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. All right, I'm back with my drink. I hope you paid attention while I was gone. Now that they're all cut out, I can glue them on and begin painting. Painting stuff that's only one color is usually the time where I have the most fun during a craft. My head can just empty out and it's no think, just paint. And once I was done, I was quite pleased. I really liked how the color looked on them, but I felt it was missing the tiniest bit of wear and tear. It just looked a bit too perfect for me. So I mixed up a dark wash that I sparingly coated all of the decks in, and boom, the tad bit of wear and tear is there, which means we can move on to building the houses themselves. With the templates I used to trace out the deck shape, I began cutting out different sized pieces to use as markers. Basically, each house in Terrytown is a set of cubes glued together in three different formations. And there are six houses total, so they just use two of each type. I'll be constructing every floor of each house wall by wall, and for every house, the walls are either one block, two blocks, or three blocks long. So I calculated how many of each type I would need and began cutting them out. To secure the stir sticks in place, I did the same thing that I did with the decks and glued sticks perpendicular to the wall. I placed these stabilizers very purposefully as I'll have to cut out windows for a lot of these walls and if I glued a stick behind where the window would go, it would get really difficult to cut out. But anyways, I traced on all of the windows just by running around each house in game and making sure I had the placements correct. I traced the windows floor by floor so I wouldn't get confused, but nothing could beat my confusion when I realized they put a window right behind these giant structural columns. Why would you put a window there? <laughs> what? Once I was done tracing them all out, I cut them out one by one with an X-Acto knife. I cut many windows, but I'm cutting out most of the footage because it hurt my delicate little fingies and I don't want to relive that. But you can't spell paint without pain, so after that was done, I could paint each wall with their respective RGB color schemes. And because this was the first house I made, I painted it before I glued it together, but it really didn't matter what order I did it in, so sometimes I glued the pieces together first and then painted it. I glued on a floor and then I cut out tiny little squares of plastic that I'm using as windows. Once all of the window holes were covered, I cut out another slab of stir sticks to use as a ceiling. I glued it on and began assembling the second floor. I added the windows to the second floor and then I used a thicker stir stick as a door. I added some tiny slabs across the front and painted it yellow. Then I realized the floor and ceiling slabs were still their original color, so before I colored the balcony floor, I colored the side of the floor and ceiling. Off camera, I cut out more walls, cut out more windows, and assembled them all before painting.
And right after I glued on the ceiling, I did not realize that I missed one single window, so pour one out for our gone but not forgotten soldier. Okay, that's enough. Now that we've paid our respect, let us continue assembling the houses. We've done a lot so far, gang, so give yourself a pat on the back and let's bring out all the different houses to see our progress. Both floors are pretty much done and the balconies and walls are painted, however, I realized that the Terrytown houses have one tiny little section of wall right under the roof. I only realized this right before I was about to begin on the house hats, so I chose to line the tops with cut toothpicks and then paint them. With all of them glued on, let's paint them with their respective colors and do the same to the other five houses. Once I finished that, I began brainstorming on how to add the white trim to all of the houses, and first I thought I could use the templates I made, but it ended up being too small. Then I figured maybe I could paint white toothpicks and glue them on, but they were too thick so it looked awkward, and eventually I remembered my solution for the deck worked out quite well, and figured I would give it a shot. So I cut up a bunch of thin strips of sketchbook paper and used some tacky glue to secure them in their respective positions. And this worked like a charm. It was it was really easy to trim them, easy to make more of them, and it didn't look bulky or awkward. And for the extra trim we added on top, I had to cut super tiny pieces of the strips. After a long time of applying these strips over and over again, we have finally come to the most exciting part of any miniature build, the roof. Now we could go the traditional route here, but there are a lot of exciting options to entertain, such as the famous Taj Mahal roof. Or perhaps you want to be a little jokester and put Pizza Hut roofs on every house, and yes, this roof does have its own subreddit. You could also choose the Wiener Schnitzel roof, but why in God's name would you? I think our lovely contestant has chosen the traditional roof, and for that, you win several more minutes of me making tiny house hats. Okay, uh, back to our regularly scheduled programming where I don't speak like I'm being held at gunpoint in an auction. The roofs have one major ingredient. Rice Krispies. Well, I guess any cereal box will do, but these boxes have really nice quality cardboard that's just the right thickness. So to make the base shape for the roofs, I will be using different sized trapezoids and triangles held together by an obscene amount of hot glue. To ensure I get consistent sized pieces, I cut a bunch of strips the same width and drew the shapes to cut. However, because I'm very poor at measuring, I ended up using this method where I only have to draw and cut out two of the four pieces for the roof. Then I can just hot glue a big piece of cardboard onto each end and use scissors to retroactively cut them to size. Thank you. 
And of course, once the base form is done comes the most important and most tedious process of making shingles. Any crafter could tell you the absolute joy they get from painting shingles or gluing them on and seeing everything fall into place. But if you look deep enough into their eyes, you can see the empty husk of a human being after cutting thousands of tiny triangular incisions into a piece of cardboard. Once I had shingles covering all four sides, I had to add some end caps on the corners and tops. Now here's the part where I feel like I messed up a little bit. You see, there's a lot of space between the end caps and the shingles, so my brain thought, let's fix that with some gap filler. Well, everything was well and dandy, but when I painted it, the bumpy texture of the baking soda was super noticeable, so if I could do this again, I'd probably just ignore the gaps, find another material that would make the gaps less noticeable, or use a thinner material like sketchbook paper for the end caps. But regardless, it's not the end of the world and the show must go on, so I gave the roofs a base coat of black and Mod Podge since I had a lot left over, and then painted them a terracotta orange. After a few coats of that, I added a bit of diversity and painted some shingles in different shades of the base color. Once that was all done, I gave all of them a dry brush in a super, super light peach to accentuate the edges of the shingles. Once the paint was all dry, I fixed them to the top of each house using some hot glue. You can give yourselves a round of applause now, because there are only two more main things to do for the houses, the fences on the balconies and the details around the windows. We're gonna start with the windows first, and we're coming back to our cereal box for some super thin strips that I'm gonna cut up into even tinier pieces, then glue those to the top and bottom of every single window. Now, I never even paid attention to the windows before this, so for some reason I thought the colors were just completely random, but luckily for me, all the colors were coded. On the green walls, the top and bottom of the window was blue and the shutters were red. On blue walls, the top and bottom were red and the shutters were green. And on red walls, the top and bottom were green and the shutters were blue. This made painting all of them much easier than I expected since they were nice enough to color code them for me. Now it was time to add the shutters, and when I made the walls and cut out the windows, I saved up all of these little squares since I knew I would need them for something. On the bright side, this means I don't have to cut out several dozen tiny squares by myself, but sadly they all needed to be cleaned up around the edges, so I did go through each one and made the edges smooth. Once they were smooth, I cut them in half, and I know you've always wondered how big 90 miniature window shutters could be, and it's roughly the size of my palm. I I glued them all one by one, and while Terrytown windows are all open to the same degree, I wanted some of the windows to be in different positions because I just find that more charming. Once they were all secured, I began painting them in their respective colors. And after that, I remembered I needed to add the Jenga towers for one of the house types that helps hold up part of the house. For this part, I used cut up toothpicks and glued them on before painting them the same color I used for the decks and balconies. Now 
we are finally going to attach the houses to the decks we made a long time ago, but first I need to add some miscellaneous wood that you can see peeking out from under the house. Do I understand the reason they have these slabs under the house? No. Will I add them regardless? Yes. Overall, it was super easy. The last thing we have to do before gluing them down is just to paint the sides that you can see the same brown we have been using the whole time. And now we can join these houses and decks in holy mad tree. Moni, get it? <laughs> Cause they're because they're made out of wood and okay uh no more dumb jokes but wow look at this we've made one two three four five six houses and you've been watching me make them for over 20 minutes now so i think you deserve a bit of a break perhaps you could call it an in tree mission <laughs> or an in tree lewd <laughs> Huh. No, but seriously, let's make the gorgeous trees that you see in Terrytown. To make the general shape, I'm twisting wire together and cutting and shaping it to form the branches. There are two trees per house, so we'll be making 12 total. Obviously, trees don't usually look like a bunch of wires, so I'll be using some polymer clay to hide them. Once I cover the roots, branches, and trunk, let's stick them in the oven and prepare the foliage. Now, I learned about this specific trick, although I did alter it slightly, from N-Scale Dystopia, so go check them out if you like dystopian miniature dioramas, they are super talented. But basically, to make the foliage, we're gonna need some cellulose sponges, I got mine from the dollar store, acrylic paint, and a coffee grinder or scissors. Let's just plug our coffee grinder in and get this ready. Oh, sorry, my dog was in here. The first step is to grind our sponges up. I had to cut them into smaller squares just so that they would fit in the coffee grinder but whatever works for you is fine. And then we grind. We want nice small pieces that don't look square, and in the end, it looks scarily similar to a plate of dry scrambled eggs. But the trees in Terrytown do not look near as highlighter yellow as this sponge, and this is the fun part. We're gonna mix up several different acrylic washes that coincide with the colors of foliage in Terrytown. It's mostly warm yellow, like I'm mixing up here, but there are oranges and greens and some reds as well. And then we mix. Dunk your sponge bits into the wash and press as much or as little as you want. I really like this part because depending on how hard you squeeze the sponge, after you dunk it in the color, you can get a really cool gradient. You could also, for example, dye sponges twice. You could let one color dry and then dunk it into a second color, and when you squeeze, you'll have a unique gradient. I found this method to be really good. The colors look natural, and even when the sponges dried a bit and shrunk slightly, they didn't look any less natural. While we let all of the sponge dry slightly, it's time to paint the trees. I'm a little bit of a plant nerd, so before I painted the bark for these trees, I really wanted to find out what tree they were based off of so I could have a lot of reference photos and get a better understanding of what I was painting. However, literally nobody, even in the deep slums of Reddit, have ever asked what type of tree we see in Terrytown, so I set off on my own and discovered the closest possible answers being the Japanese Japanese Duartia and the American Sycamore. If you mix the two together, I think we would have an exact replica. Once I got that straight in my head, I mixed up all the colors I would need and began to paint. The first layer will cover the entire tree and act as the base. The next layer will be light smudges of green paint. I'm using a sponge and wiping most of it off. The third layer will be our most prominent layer of off-white shapes, most of the time having sharp lines but occasionally being slightly smudged. And the last layer is just random touches of brown, usually overlapping with the white spots. I do that to all 12 trees and up. Oh, What's this? What's missing? Just kidding, it's right here. <laughs> I've never made fake trees before, so I wanted to make sure it looked good, and in case it didn't, I didn't ruin 11 other trees in the process. But since it looks unbelief, 
Probably great. Let's start layering in the different colored sponges. Now that I somewhat know what I'm doing, I'm gonna finish up the rest of the trees and start gluing them down. <sighs> Yet again, I come back to the texture paste. I'm gonna use this mixture again to cover up the bald spots, I guess you could call them, basically to make the trees look like they're in actual dirt and not super glued to the deck. Once it's hardened, I can mix up some paint and color it so it looks like a mound of grass. Now that the trees are taken care of, it's time to go back to the base. Ix. I'm sorry, but the first thing I did off camera was cut a Minecraft lily pad into the center of the base. The prayer fountain in Terrytown has a gravel bottom, so I got some dirt and Mod Podge, and we're gonna paint it gray after giving it a nice even coat to the bottom. I used the same technique I used to build the decks for the platform that surrounds the prayer fountain, and after I painted it brown, I used some hot glue to secure it to the center of the base. The inside walls of the fountain are also made of wood, so I cut some to size, attached them with hot glue, and painted them the same color. I made these simple boxes with some more of the cereal box I had left over, and some stir sticks, and painted them brown for the body, and red for the top. Next, I made these as the spigots for the fountain. They look a lot like whistles and are basically just long rectangles with an open space for the water to come out. The front and back were painted blue and the top and sides were painted brown. Next up is the big centerpiece, and it's basically the same, only we paint the front and back red instead of blue. But once the paint has dried, it's time to write some Hillian on the sides. I'll be accurate for this big one, but for the other smaller pieces where I need to write in Hillian, it's just gonna be scribbles because it's way too small of a surface. And if you're wondering what they say, they say building. Literally 99% of the labels in Terrytown just say building. So I found that to be quite the hoot. But I glue them all in place and begin underpainting for the grass. I use a sponge for this and while I'm doing it, I have the game open right next to me to make sure I'm painting the right places. I add some yellow highlights and blend it out, and when I'm done, I take out my static grass applicator, which I did not realize had no batteries in it until I was halfway done, but it turned out okay in the end. And now it is time for true pain. If this video was an anime, this would be the pain arc from Naruto. <laughs> Making the fences for the decks and balconies was quite tedious. To begin, I cut up a bunch of tiny strips and then cut them all in half. These would be the middle parts of the fence, and I was lucky enough that I had all of these cut toothpicks already made. The only problem was, much like the shutters, they had a lot of split ends and all needed to be smoothed, and right as I finished, I broke my knife. <laughs> At this point, my crafting gusto has diminished significantly, and on top of that, frustration and impatience was becoming more and more prevalent as I tried several ways to build these tiny fences, but none of them worked, and I had to resort to the slowest method possible while building them. The light at the end of the tunnel was that they looked really good. If I was a little amoeba rancher, these are the fences I would want to have on my little amoeba farm. I first tackled the fences along the back of the decks, and once I was done with all of those, I did the fences on the balconies. Only some houses have furniture up here. This house is going to be the inn, so it has a table, a bench behind it, and a little stool off to the side, which I paint all the proper colors. I add a door frame, and I add the massive light above the door as well. Thank you. 
I add the two steps up to the balcony door and paint those as well as give them a quick dry brush. Okay, so it's um, <laughs> it's 2.30 in the morning right now. I'm crunching to finish this thing. And I've just got done with like that little seat and the, the table and the inside, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna see what it looks like. So I put it on the, the actual rock, right? <laughs> that this thing is so big and it's like look it's like it's taller than the house so i'm like oh, it's just oh my god the, the anguish that i feel right now girl you know what i mean um i'm just slowly losing like my sanity the longer that this project goes on so um i'm sorry that this is inaccurate but it's also just really funny, so at least there's that. <laughs> so yeah, at this point I was really losing my steam, as you could probably gather, and I ended up not doing the fences or lamp posts outside of the houses just because that felt like a new form of torture for me. There are enough tiny details that I left out that I could one day add in with a separate video, so let me know in a bit if you guys want a little detail update for Terrytown, because I'd be happy to do that after a little break from thinking about this town. But it's been a long journey and you stuck all the way until the end. I'm gonna add the last details and without further ado, here are the final shots of Terrytown. Wow, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the biggest project I've ever worked on, so if you want to support me and see more, I have a Patreon with a huge backlog of goodies like BTS photos and updates as I craft. You'll also get a shout out in a video, so consider supporting me over there. It's October now, so get ready for spooky crafts coming up, and I'll see you next time.